I'm here this morning with Professor Pascu, who is Vice President of the European Parliament and is here to talk about um, EU policymaking, evidence and analysis in a shared roundtable between the European Parliament and the European University Institute. So Professor Pascu, how important are these collaborative projects in improving policymaking at an EU level? I think it's essential and I'm very glad you know that in 2014 uh, President Schulz and uh, uh, head of the institution, your institution at that time, have signed this cooperative agreement and we are um, trying to put substance into it. And uh, we discussed this morning, for instance, that uh, somehow, you know, the, um, and there will be a possibility for uh, members of parliament themselves to come here and have a short period of time to familiarize themselves and cut themselves from the mundane daily work and stay a little bit, step, step a bit uh, behind, you know, and, and reflect. Mm -hmm. Because this is what we, we lose in our world, reflection. It's not the accumulation of information, but it's also a reflection on it, so which we lose. Mm -hmm. So would you look to further the relationship yes. with institutions yes. such as the Robert Schumann Centre? Categorically, categorically, and I would be a supporter of the development of this relationship. and. Um, I even wrote in the couple of words which I put in the book uh, that uh, I regret that uh, so late in life I, would be, I was able to come here. But in any case, I consider it a treat, intellectually speaking. That's great. So. And um, this kind of information sharing, um, how important is that in preparing the European Union for further crises and challenges ahead? Well, crises and challenges are usually responded by uh, a certain degree of improvisation. Because the crisis, uh, it's a surprise in itself and then not everything, you cannot anticipate everything. So you would appeal, you know, to standard procedures prepared well in advance, but you have also to improvise. That improvisation, you know, becomes, uh, becomes law afterwards, more or less, not in the juridical sense, but, but it becomes a standard procedure afterwards. So uh, the fact that we, uh, we uh, need to reduce the area of improvisation if we can, and this is an effort, you know, to anticipate, this is an effort train yourself in order to see how you did in other crises, you know, trying to anticipate other crises which might come. But besides that, besides that, uh, policies should be really implemented on uh, what the reality is telling you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, you know, you cannot uh, implement a policy co uh, solely on, uh, on expectations, on this sort of thing. Uh, this is the easiest way and populism is built on this. Because they would say, ah, you want this, I can give it to you. Ah, you want that, I can give it to you. You know, so we, irrespective of if you are able to implement or not. While you take a decision and you have, to, that would have consequences. So first you have to think it over, you know, very well. And then, you know, watch, monitor how it is implemented and be able to correct. And that is being done, you know, by actual analysis, uh, and that's the purpose of the seminar uh, I am here for. Mm -hmm. So does the work that's going on here between the European Parliament and the Robert Schuman Centre, does it contribute to a more cohesive European identity uh, and project? This is the purpose. This is the purpose, you know, and we are gradually developing this relationship. And that's why we discussed a number of uh, possibilities to increase this uh, exchange, you know, not only of people, but also of information. You have one of the best uh, libraries on law. And uh, not many of us, when, you know, we design uh, a certain piece of legislation in the parliament are aware of certain tenets, theoretical one sort. Here it is. So that's why I said, you know, you, from time to time you need uh, to, stay, to step back a little bit and take uh, some time for reflection. Mm -hmm. uh, problem is, you know, the time does not allow us to do that. But essentially, we should be conscientious about it and uh, whenever we can, we should. And actually, my visit here is exactly mm -hmm. one such step and, and reflect a little bit on the substance of the discussion. Mm -hmm. For instance, you know, there was no time to really uh, bridge the gap between Eastern countries and Western countries when 
uh, EU was enlarged, and then the crisis has struck. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, other things started to uh, deepen, practically, the differences of perception, expectations, and so on. So this is an area in which the Institute could, could think of, uh, you know, trying to find ways in time how to bridge this gap and not allow it to get uh, deeper because actually this is why we integrated to get rid of that division and all of a sudden we see that the division is um, is uh, even f is even greater so these sort of things you know so think strategically and this is the prerogative of the institute but also you know offering for the tactical things support concrete support because usually the national leaders, you know, do not pay too much attention to uh, such an institute. Probably they consider it as part of the Brussels key or something like this. But, but, you know, they should pay attention because this is, you practically gather here experience, good experience from so many countries. Uh, that would be useful. Great. Well, thank you very much thank for you very much. sharing your opinions with me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>